Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller here in a campground in Central Florida with Robert Glasscock in Little Rock, Arkansas in the snow, or at least trying to. <laughs> this is the contrast. And we're going to keep this series going of really the last three episodes. We wrapped up the Secrets series with Pisces. Then we had a great listener question about planets in our signs, especially related to secrets. And then her follow-up question on, are we looking at our sun sign or our rising sign? And we have another question, Robert, to drill down even on that. Hi, Thomas and Robert. I have a question about ascendant and the sun signs. What I learned is that the sun sign is who you're meant to become and the ascendant is what you're originally like. But recently I heard an astrologist, she was saying that the ascendant is the future you. I agree and disagree with her opinion. So I was just wondering, what is your take on the two from the, your 50 plus years of experience in astrology? And also when you move, you have a relocation chart and the ascendant is also different. So I was just wondering, how does that affect a person's chart? And lastly, for transit reading, people always say you can refer to both the sun and the ascendant signs. But what I noticed from my experience is that the transits using the ascendant sign is a little bit more accurate and is this how you feel from your experience too thank you okay well i'd like to start with the last question about the transits because you do you read these all the time in sun sign columns this applies to your sun sign or your ascendant and we really just explained uh, previously what why that's that's true i wrote for american astrology wrote their sun sign and annual digest columns for about 10 years so and it does it, it, the reason it it works uh, is because if you don't know a person's birth time, then we create what's called a solar chart, which is a chart for noon on their birthday, but turned so that the sun is on the first cusp. And that's called a solar chart. And then you can read that chart for people who don't have a birth time. But if you have a time of birth like she does, uh, then you probably will have a different sign on the ascendant than your sun sign. And she was noticing the difference in the of accuracy of transits in her solar chart with the sun on the first cusp versus her timed birth chart with her true ascendant on the first cusp. And she has found that the transits are a little, as she put, a little more accurate in her timed birth chart with her ascendant on the first cusp. And she's absolutely right. There are things that I would not be so confident in reading in a solar chart that I, particularly about, let's say, health or something, uh, whereas I would be very comfortable reading about that in a, a timed birth chart. So there are differences. And I, I, I will confirm in my experience, too, uh, the accuracy is better when you have a timed birth chart than when you're using a solar chart. So that was number one. And then she asked about the difference between the ascendant and the sun sign, which is a natural question here. Uh, she said that the, I guess an astrologer told her that the sun sign is what we are aiming to become, and that's absolutely true. If you think of the sun, the archetype, the symbol, a circle with a dot in the center, it looks like a target. So that I'm, I'm born a Libra, October 1st. Well, it would be lovely to think that I was born balanced and in harmony with all of the plants and animals of the beautiful world. But that's not the case, of course. I've, what I have had to learn to do, a target, is learn to balance. So there, the life force, the sun, is expressing through the, the archetype of the sign that it was born under. So that is what you are becoming. The ascendant, I, I, I'm confused by her phrase, the ascendant, she was told by this astrologer, the ascendant is what you were originally like. I don't know what that means, but the ascendant is like the shell in which the soul incarnates, the envelope, the package. It's uh, absolutely indicative of and very specific by degree. You can get that degree rising. 
not only the sign, but the decanate. What, well, what 10 degree segment of the sign is it? Is it in the first 10 degrees, second 10 degrees, third 10 degrees? Because each decanate is ruled, sub-ruled by a different sign. And you can get it down to a duad, a two and a half degree segment. This goes back to Arabic astrology. And each duad is sub-ruled by a different planet. And each one of those sub-rulerships of the duad and the decanate are ruled by planets which you can locate in your natal chart and get further information about you very personally and your life just through the ascendant degree. So that's the, the house you inhabit in this life, in that sense. Now, your external house, the house where you live, or the apartment, or the condo, is the fourth house. But the ascendant is the symbol for your whole life. This is why the, the planet that rules your ascending sign is your life ruler. I'm born with Capricorn rising. Anybody born with Capricorn rising will have Saturn as their life rulers so you had better learn <laughs> what saturn means and of course i'm born a libra and our entire goal in life is to simply get through life as beautifully and as comfortably as we possibly can preferably without lifting a finger but then of course that doesn't work so you have to learn <laughs> <laughs> that no, indeed, Saturn is exalted in Libra for a reason, Bob. You have to work. <laughs> and so, and of course, when you find something you love to do for work, then life becomes glorious. So I don't know if those answers are, oh, she asked about relocation. That was the other thing. And yes, absolutely. When you relocate, your descendant does change in that location. You never leave, you never leave your natal chart. But absolutely, and for example, I moved to Los Angeles when I was 20. It turned out I was under my Jupiter line. And I didn't know a thing about astrology, but that I knew at 13, I wanted to live there. Uh, and it took me seven years to get there and loved every minute of those 30 years. No wonder I was under my Jupiter line. This is where astrocartography comes in, too, because you can look at a world map and see exactly where all of your natal planets and points are angular and therefore strong. So living 30 years in Los Angeles under my Jupiter line was, was heaven on Earth for me. So absolutely, it makes a difference. Um and then she was talking about this astrologer who had said the ascendant represents the future you. Uh, I absolutely disagree. The angular houses are the present. The succeedant houses are the future. And the cadent houses are the past. And you can do this in a couple of ways. You can look at your first house as your present life. It is not your future life. It is the present life. The future life, if you want to get into incarnations even. Go back to Mark Edmund Jones. The fifth house in a horoscope is the projection of self into the future, which we do through either having biological children, ruled by the fifth house, or creative children, business ventures, artworks and so on all creative figuratively children but the fifth house is a succeedant house it's the future of the first house the first house is not the future you i don't know why an astrologer would say it it's the present you i was born as is every capricorn rising under saturn it's fascinating to me because only in the last year, I'm 78, in the last year did I learn from my cousin that my dad, who was going down on a ship in the English Channel when I was born, he was really, he could have died. So I didn't meet him for nine months. But before he went back to fight, he had come home on leave and my cousin just this past year told me your dad was going to divorce your mother until he learned she was pregnant with you. Now, that's a fascinating secret to know. And they stayed married for 26 years. But I have the sun opposite the moon at birth and in a grand cross with Saturn. So my parents were always separate, opposite, full moon baby. And indeed, they did divorce, but not for 26 years. But nonetheless, the marriage and my own birth occurred in that sort of emotionally separate and, in fact, geographically separate situation. 
And that gives a certain kind of dynamic to my life, you see. So there's a difference uh, between the present life. If you want to know your future incarnation, look to your fifth house. And that's where you're, you're headed if you don't do anything about it. So it'll give you tremendous clues where you're headed in this life. I hope that makes sense and answers your question. I'm thinking maybe. Let's just play with this. I don't know. I'm not right. But I'm just pondering. As I'm, again, we always, with astrology, we always internalize it. We always think of ourself, and that's really the one thing that most people can't relate to, <laughs> other people. But, like, for me, I'm a Gemini rising. So if somebody says that the ascendant is the future you, I will say this, <clears throat> that the more that I have grown into communication, the more successful I became. That's because you were born with that. That's not a future you. I mean, it is, but that's what you were born to do in this life, in this present life. The future you in this life has to do with Libra on your fifth, and that's partnerships. And those can be two kinds, marriage or business, or both in your life. But it's through collaborations. And that's your future learning how to collaborate with people as equals. Not as you in power or them in power, but as equals, co-equals. You and I have this kind of relationship, you see. So business marriages, and believe me, I don't know about you, in my life, <laughs> business marriages like this, this teamwork that you and I have, have worked out far better than marriage. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> Most cases, yes. I think maybe <laughs> not that's... Better, not better, but they're completely different. You know, they really are. Yeah, they are different. But I think <laughs> maybe that thin line here is that maybe in some astrology circles, the understanding of the ascendant is if we grow into it, I guess the thing is, is I wandered, you know, and this is where bringing my own journey into this is not totally fair, but I wandered for so long and in some of that, explored maybe more of that Scorpio kind of thing from you know, that I managed medical practices for a while. I was never so far off course in my world. I was wandering <laughs> around in the Neverlands out there. That was not me. Some people say, oh, Scorpio people are great in medicine because it's so detail-oriented and all this stuff. Uh, I'm not a detail person. But when I got back to communication about 15 years ago, Bam! You know, everything mm -hmm. just clicked mm -hmm. back into place. So maybe mm -hmm. that's what they're talking about. Maybe so. And maybe, maybe that so. gets protruded into future, where it's not really future, as you're saying. The distinction is, those are the tools that you came in here with to do well. And when you recognize that and step in and embrace those, I mean, maybe that's the thing. Maybe a lot of us kind of fall away from who we really are. Oh, gee, that's not a problem. <laughs> and once we embrace who we really are, packaged in that ascendant, and we lean into that, then our life really does change. It gets positive. True. I think absolutely true. All right, let me ask you I another mean, little yeah. setup here. Let's say that we're at a get-together, and somebody comes up and identifies in our conversation that they are into astrology, and they say... Oh, no, the, the Ascendant is the future you. <laughs> How dogmatically should we think about defending <laughs> that position? <laughs> you know, it really depends on your understanding of the horoscope. To me, and the time and space configurations that the horoscope shows, the horoscope is based on the rotation of the Earth and the perspective from a very specific set of coordinates. So when you were born... The ascending degree is characteristic of the moment of your entry, your full entry into this life, your separation from the mother. That may or may not occur exactly when they snip the umbilical cord. Having had out-of-body experiences, like so many millions of people, you understand that the soul's uh, encasement in the flesh is pretty, pretty flexible, really. We're out of our bodies during dreams, for example, and certainly out of body in other sorts of experiences, like the ones that I've had, the few I've had. 
only during one year of my life. So the ascendant degree, I'm born with Capricorn rising, for example. So the moment I came into birth, I had 10 degrees, 20 minutes, Capricorn rising, which is the second decanate of Capricorn. So it's around to Taurus. All right, but I, I'm born with Capricorn rising, a sign of maturity and wisdom in old age. And I, when I was a child, I think truly, I, I thought I was an adult. And it ticked me off that uh, other people didn't treat me like one. And I think I was pretty unconsciously bossy and um, impatient and judgmental. And all of those Capricorn things that when you're a child, you can't possibly be because you don't have the the experience, the time factor. Saturn, you're not old enough yet. I've grown into it. And uh, especially my chart ruler, Saturn, is in Cancer. And that's tends to be emotional immaturity. And it was only until I got into astrology that I realized that Saturn at 10 degrees Cancer, exactly opposite my ascendant. Without astrology, I would always have remained at the emotional level of a 10-year-old. Think about it. Not good. <laughs> but it was true for me. And I have my moon, which rules that Saturn in Aries, a sign of innocence and immaturity and all of that stuff at a very early degree in Aries. So I would have remained emotionally stunted and immature all of my life if I had not gotten into this. And thank heaven, then metaphysics and astrology helps raise your consciousness. That's all it does is to make you aware of yourself and what you believe and how you're behaving and so on, and whether it's effective and constructive or not. But that's the understanding of space and time. The succeeding houses are the future of anything. The old technique for looking at past lives, for example, is to take the ascendant and look at the person's 12th house, and that will tell you their past life. Or just turn the chart so the 12th house is on the first and read that like a past life, and that'll be the story of their past life. That's because the 12th house is the past. The second house is the future. All succeeding houses are. So to make a statement... The ascendant was the future you. No, it isn't. It's the present you. It's the present you. It's what you're learning in this life to be and how to handle that sign and what it means. I think the idea here is as astrology continues to progress and get more popular in our culture, hopefully, that there will be some misinterpretations out there. And the idea is how do we defend them? And I think one of the thing is we have to know what the real thing is ourselves, first of all, right? We have to have a good grounding. That's why you listen to the old soul, new soul astrology podcast. But then how gently or how firmly, like I've seen you very firmly defend some positions. And I'm just wondering in a social setting, how firmly should we stand in these things that we know to be true that might be being misrepresented by somebody? Well, I'm real firm in, in what I use and why I use it. And one of the things I love in students, and I, and I tell them, you know, at any point, it's not that I'll do this in, in practicums or workshops, but at any point, you should be able to tell people why you use certain things. I don't use progressions. I can tell you why I don't. I do use solar arcs, and I can tell you why. So as and the, and the why is something that I've accumulated over the years of study. But you can go to a book, say Mark Edmund Jones' book on orary astrology. Orary is very specific about how it works, the rules that you have to follow. When charts cannot be read, because they will tell you and in orary astrology, this chart cannot be read for this reason, meaning the situation in question. And so it's very specific. And in orary astrology, if your understanding of the time factor and the houses, such as angular succeeding and Caden, if that understanding is shaky or off, you're going to misread the timing by years or certainly months. So if you understand time and space, which is what the horoscope depicts, then you understand the succeeding houses are the future, always. And you can do that. The future of your, your career is interesting. Because that's the succeeding house from the 10th house. And there are really two of them. The 11th is one. So the future of your career, that's where your career is headed. Out of the 10th house into the 11th. Because the 11th is the succeeding second house from the 10th. 
So this understanding of succeeding at angularity and cadency is really fundamental to astrology. And for somebody to say the ascendant represents the future you is totally wrong. Why is, the, why is the fifth house representative of our future and not the second? Because, again, as Mark Edmund Jones puts it, the fifth house is the projection of self into the future. It's what we love to do. It's our hobbies. It's what gives us pleasure. Sex is one of them. Reproduction is another one. So is creative output, another one, a huge one, which is why people like Michelangelo don't necessarily have stable marriages, or in his case, even stable love lives, because his output was so obsessive, compulsive, ferociously brilliant that that's what he loved more than anything, was that. And that's his fifth house. That's what he loves. This is why follow your bliss is such a true statement. Find out what you love and figure out a way to make a living from it. I've done it all my life. It's all my fifth house. I have Taurus on my fifth. That's money, the money sign through the fifth. Oddly enough, what I love to write in television, for example, were thrillers and crime shows. I'm not a criminal, but I love crime. It's fascinating to me. That was one thing. The other thing I did was discover astrology, which is also Venus in Scorpio, deeply metaphysical in my 10th house of career and so on. So it's this understanding of time and space that's depicted, I think, that leads people to that you, you and look, I'm, I'm, you know me, I encourage people to try whatever they want to in astrology. And if it works for them, if they're getting something from it, use it. I've tried everything. I don't use Chiron, for example, not because it's wrong. It isn't wrong. It's valuable. But I don't have never gotten anything from Chiron personally that I don't already get elsewhere by reading the sixth house or reading Mercury or any number of other things. So I, it's not that it doesn't work. It's just unnecessary for me to do what I do. And so on. So try everything. And if it works for you, fine. If it doesn't work, put it aside. Maybe you'll come back to it later. Maybe you'll never use it. I don't use progressions. But again, I can tell you why. And that's the reason I think that's important. So if you, if you feel like the ascendant describes the future, you tell me why. I want to wrap this episode up based on what you just said with something that we've never done before. So just go with me on this. I found this not long ago after I had listened to the audio book of Roseanne Cash, who is Johnny Cash's daughter, and it was her memoir. So Johnny Cash died in 2003, and about six months after he died at the Ryman Auditorium, they had a memorial for him, and it was broadcast. It was recorded and broadcast. Roseanne sang two songs, and in introducing the first one, which was Tennessee Flat Top Box, written, of course, by her dad in the early 1960s, she introduced it with a beautiful tribute to him. And I'd like to just play the part where she mentions what we're talking about. Listen to this. My father's integrity as an artist was the same integrity that informed him as a parent. When I was a teenager, I was lying on the bed in my room reading a book on astrology, and my dad walked in and asked me what I was reading. And I handed him the book and said, you don't really believe in this, do you? And he said, no, but I think you should find out everything you can about it. The wisdom of Johnny Cash right there. <laughs> he didn't believe it, but he thought you should learn everything you can. Isn't that cool? It's a wonderful yeah. tribute. It's yeah. on YouTube. Beautiful. It's Roseanne Cash, Tennessee Flat Top Box, Live 2003 is the name of it. Well, it's a beautiful way to parent. You know, I wish every parent said that. No, I don't, but I don't know anything about it. You should find out everything you can about it. Isn't that Good priceless? Yeah. yeah. Good for him. Because that's telling the child, you're interested in it. Explore it. Not putting it down and you're an idiot. None of that, which, of course, is what most children get. And as that freedom and acceptance grows, yeah. so does yeah. astrology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, All right, Robert, beautiful. thank you. This is a great conversation. If you'd like to book a session with Robert, as we always talk about, the link to that is direct in the show notes. All you have to do is click it. Check also our Discord channel. We'd love to have you join over there because Kristen is really keeping a great conversation going past these episodes. And you can ask questions in there and converse with fellow listeners. And also our YouTube channel is where you can find all of these podcasts in their own playlist. 
and listen to them on YouTube if you prefer to do that. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time on the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock.